Today I'm going to cover how to do simple SIP trunking or peering between an ASHRAE server and a SIP device. In this case here, the SIP device is a Genbang QFlex ESBC. So, quick uh, overview of this. What's going to happen here is that this phone or soft phone will register to the ASHRAE server. The ASHRAE server will not register to any other device. Basically, you're just going to have a simple dial peer that will send calls to the GenBand device and also receive calls from the GenBand device. So here, basically, is your SIP trunking or SIP peering um, peers. Now, the first step is to log into your Asterisk server and then go to the following directory on the screen here, Etsy Asterisk. Now I say some time. Um, I already configured the sipconf and the sip and the extension.com. So let's first cat the sip.com file. Let's just review some of the stuff I had in here. So here you always have a general section. In this case here, the general section I have some additional items that I put in. For example, I was messing around with video support, but I disabled by putting the semicolon in front. Um, I didn't disallow all Kodaks, and now I am going to allow four Kodaks, two of them are G711, first one is ULaw, the other one is ALaw, then I'm going to allow G729, and then I'm going to allow GSM. And these three additional Kodaks are for video, so I commented them out so I can be doing any video. Here, this is say turn on the, the bloody SIP option crap. Um, here I'm not going don't care about can re-invite. Binding address is just listen to any interface um, for a call and always on port 5060 and I will create a employee contact in my extension.conf and I will put my SIP trunking parameters there and dial plan and obviously the dial plan to ring the SIP phone or the soft phone. Now here uh, this is my soft phone the username is 3209 now notice I don't have a secret. I didn't do a password on this. This is not out in the, in the wilds of the internet. Um, it's not connected to any TDM or anything. So I didn't put a uh, password on. If you had if you wanted to do a password, you would type the word secret equals whatever your password is. And here, as you can see, it's a type friend. Oh, that means it's two-way traffic. It both can send and receive calls. It's dynamic, obviously. It's DHCP controlled. Uh, it's going to go into contact employee in the extension.conf. I'm going to use DTMS RC 2833. Um, it's natted. <clears throat> I'm going to want SIP option pings to ping it, and I created a mailbox uh, in the SIP and the void in the voicemail.conf file, which I will not be covering in this small vid here. The next set of parameters is basically you want to say the SIP trunk or the SIP peering um, configuration, which is going to that GenBand. QFlex ESBC um, SBC. So the first thing is a friend. Well, once again, this trunk's two-way. It will it will send traffic to 2.36 and also will receive traffic from 2.36. Next, obviously, this ESBC needs to fall underneath the employee contacts to make it all work. So after that, we next go to the extension.conf and we create some dial plans and here do we have some dial plans so let me just clear this out here and make it a little easier to deal with and now we have the dial plans as you notice all my dial plans do fall underneath the employee contacts the first set of four rules here is for my soft phone all right so if somebody dials a four digit number it will be grabbed by the set of uh, rules All right, and then the four digit number will be put into this variable EXTN and as you can see it will dial whatever four digit came in. Since I only have one four digit configured 3209 and the other number comes in it will fail. Um, and nobody picks up in 20 seconds that's what this value here is it goes to voicemail and then after voicemail it will hang up. The next set of rules here is if somebody dials seven digits. So someone comes in with seven digits, 
it will not dial the seven digits it will ignore the first three digits and dial the last four digits so what this colon three basically means is ignore the first three digits and keep the last four digits and use those as the dialed number and there's no voicemail here it just hangs up this is going outbound to the ESBC so basically what I'm doing here is I'm dialing your typical 10 digit uh, North American number and the last set of rules here is if you want to get voicemail like I said before I'm not covering voicemail in this particular video now let's go ahead and go into the asterisk system and let's see let's see what the asterisk sees and here as you can see it knows of two devices one the soft phone 32093209 and the other one the Genvan QFlex ESPC SPC alright so now let's go ahead and make a phone call we're gonna do the first the first phone call will be from the soft phone to the Cisco gateway here just a typical zip trunk call right out so we'll dial it and and it's been answered here you can see the extension of calling number and the dial number and the peer that I used in this case ESBC which we saw in the extension and in the SIP conf. In other words, this call went to 2.36. Now let's do a SIP show channels. And the first line here is just a typical option ping going out. Here is the dial number or the call ed number, SIP ID, the Kodak being used, and you can see it was ACT. Next line here is the actual soft phone. Here's the calling or Annie, and it's using GSM29. So this is a GSM29 call from end to end. Now I'm going to hang up this call, and voila, it's been hung up. Now I am going to make the call in another direction, where I'll dial from the Cisco gateway through the SBC into the asterisk and hit the lovely soft phone so let's attempt to do that now I'm only gonna dial, I'm gonna dial four digits and you'll notice something about this particular call now I only dialed 3209 however what came in was seven digits and so that one rule works. And let's just go to that rule real quick. Let's do cat extensions.conf. Here, this is the set of rules that worked. Because I have no extension, seven digit extension on this asterisk system. So strip the 364 and dial the 3209. Let's go back into our lily asterisk system. Let's do a sip show channels and now we have it here's the dialed number notice it's G729 here's the calling number or the Annie the call came from and it's using G711 ULAW so let's go to the diagram so this side of the call is G711 this side of the call basically dialed 3209 the QFlex here added 364 and punted out 364-3209 and kept G711. The ASCII server saw 364-3209, ignored 364 and dialed the last four digits of 3209, which rang the phone. However, the ASCII server is doing transcoding between G711 and made it to G729. And that covers a simple SIP trunking between an asterisk server and a SIP device. In this case, it was an SBC.